to worship. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek thy good. Well to be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, Lord. I have loved thy habitation, the place where thy honor dwelleth. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We're going to joyfully make some noise. And that noise should be the 413th hymn, which says, Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you, some other to win. Fight manfully onward. Dark passions subdue. Look ever to Jesus. He'll carry you through. Without further lining, let us be joyful, happy, and sing our song. carry you through. All you got to do is just ask the Savior 
to help you. And he will do just what you ask him to do. As I tell you all the time, God is a good God. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. He's not going to give us any more than we can bear. He is our burden bearer, our mind regulator. And he is our friend when we don't have any friends. God is just who he says he is. Oh, Father God, which art in heaven, we come with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come with praises on our lips. Heavenly Father, that you allowed us to come into your house of worship one more time. Heavenly Father, we consider it a privilege to come and worship you and give you your highest praise. Well, as I say all the time, Lord, can't nobody do us like you, Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us through dangers seen and unseen. Thank you for our church family, Lord Jesus, and each home that is represented here. Heavenly Father, we come asking you right now, Jesus, just to go into the homes of the sick and shut in. Go into the nursing homes, Heavenly Father, and be with them. And Heavenly Father, let them know that they're not by themselves. That all they have to do is look toward the hills which cometh thy help. Because our help cometh from you, O oh Lord. Then, Heavenly Father, we just ask you to bless those who do not know you in the pardons of their sins. For, Heavenly Father, we know that you are a good God. And we know that you are an on time God. We know that you are an awesome God. We know, Heavenly Father, that you sit high and you look down low. Oh, Heavenly Father, we know that you give us everything that we need. And Heavenly Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for the sunshine and thank you for the rain. Thank you for the clouds. Heavenly Father, thank you for the wind that blows. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just can't thank you enough. Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for the word that shall come forth. On this day, may it convict and convert and do what you would have it to do. Oh, Heavenly Father, bless this church as a whole. Bless, Heavenly Father, each organization that is represented here. Heavenly Father, bless our musicians, Lord Jesus. Bless our urchins on the door. Bless our students, Lord Jesus. Bless our praise team, Lord Jesus. And Heavenly Father, bless the finance committee, Lord Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, we just ask you, Lord Jesus, to give them the ability to do what you would have them to do. Oh, Heavenly Father, we can't thank you enough. We can't thank you enough. And Heavenly Father, if there's anything that I left out, Lord Jesus, Heavenly Father, charge it to my mind and not my heart. Oh, Heavenly Father, this is my prayer. And I send it up to you, Jesus. On the wings of your holy angels, in Jesus' name I pray, amen, and amen, and amen. Hear our prayer. And incline. Lord Jesus, and grant us thy peace. Everyone say
Good morning, St. Paul. Uh, I know the pews are not full, but we're going to take time out and give God some praises. Amen? Amen. So if you love the Lord, say glory. glory. Uh, say it like you mean it. Glory. Amen. Amen. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment hopes of all I do Jesus you're the center of my joy when I've lost my direction you're the compass for my way. You're the fire at night. When the nights are long and cold. Yeah, in sadness, you are my laughter. That shadows all of my fear oh, When I'm all alone Your hand is there to hold Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah Oh yeah. Oh, Comes from you, Lord. Oh, yes, it does. Oh. You are why I find pleasure in the simple things in life. You're the music. In the meadow and the stream, the voices of the children, my family and my home, you're the source in hope. Oh my Jesus, you are, you are 
the center of my joy. Jesus, you are the center of my joy. Scripture reading uh, for today will be Psalms 146. Psalm 146. One through six. Write that down for your devotion. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praises to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Blessed are those whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. May the Lord bless you 
and shine his light upon you from all that dwells below the skies. God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God that brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Glory. Glory. of Thanksgiving. Amen. Lord, ain't nothing like some good food. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then the best part, take a nap right after. Amen. Oh, you sleep good after that one right there. Oh, good 45 minutes. i nap, boy. I tell you, get the get food time to digest. Amen. I think they need to put a pill make, got turkey on it. Because turkey will put you to sleep. Amen. I'm talking about a good turkey. Amen. Prepared with love and tenderness and dressing. Oh, but we should be thankful this week for all the things that God has done. He's been good. He's good to us all the time. Amen. Before I begin the teaching moment, I would be remiss. This week was a historic week. Yes. Two historical dates were on the calendar. On November the 17th, Lula Mae Jenkins was born into this world. Happy birthday, Mama. Amen. And also, November the 17th, 1911, Howard University. Friday at 7.30 p.m. Amen. It was a dark and stormy night. Amen. Where the word says friendship is essential to the soul. So all my bros out there. Hurt. Happy belated Founders Day to the men of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. 
Oh, some good men in there. Ain't that right, Brother Steve Harvey? Ain't that right, Brother D.L. Hughley? Ain't, ain't that right, Brother Joe Torrey? Ain't that right, Shaquille? Ain't that right, uh, Brother Ben Crump? Keep, keep protecting us. Amen. I can go on, Brother Michael Jordan. Amen. And so many of them that have done great things in the Lord, as well as your humble pastor. Amen. And lastly, I got to say thank you to a brother in ministry. Uh, happy Founders Day to Minister Louis Farrakhan. Oh, you didn't know he was one, did you? There he is. Amen. Teaching moment is this, something to take with you. God gave us a command to go forth and make disciples. Amen. To be light into the world to go out and evangelize those that are lost and those that need compassion and need help. And we ought to be that light. We ought to be that happiness, that joy, that blessing. Because when he commissioned you, he said, you are my hands, you are my arms, you are my legs, you are my eyes, you are my mouth. Go and tell them what I said. Go and love them as I have loved you. Mm -hmm. So we got to get out and get people. We got to get people and bring them in. I know y'all got a little thing about rec reclamation. You know, members. I mean, give you a little hint. Well, I, I've been a member of St. Paul. I've been a member of this church all my life, and I've been there. Well, if you ain't been here in 10 years, you ain't a member. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I believe the discipline says three. And you ain't on the road no more. Amen. Amen. So we need to reclaim those that are falling by the wayside. Amen. I used to be tripping at my the other churches and stuff. You know, I thought it was me. I was like, oh, is it me? What's going on? No, it ain't me. Well, they didn't like this church. They they wanted better music, they wanted better this and better that. Guess what? I found out. They ain't going nowhere. Amen? Amen. They stopped going. You need to have that compassion to ask why. Bring them back. Maybe they fall, fell down so hard. Just, you know, how many of y'all failed before? How many of you stumbled? I ain't talking about that little trip up and fall on the ground. I'm talking about you thought you was walking upright and all of a sudden life amen, amen. amen. tripped you up. Yeah. You fell down and, and you bruise your soul, you bruise your spirit. Sometimes you, you fell into the wrong crowd yeah. or wrong person or people and, and they hurt your spirit so much that I'm just not going. Well, I prayed and God didn't answer my prayer. Mm. Mm. Really? Well, that's a Bible study. So we blame it on God and we're all running from God. But I done lived long enough and I done lost a lot of hair in the meantime to find out that your arms are too short to box with God. You can run, but you can't hide. You can continue to go down the way you think going and not go, but one day, that Bible says every knee shall bow. Every tongue will confess. So it's best to get it right now. It's best to when you hear his call, just come on, come on. It's best, you know, let me go on back to church. The last part of the teaching moment is when we stay away. This is what, y'all got to help the pastor. I'm in a God's special education class, and I ain't as smart as some of y'all. Amen. But I can't figure out why people stay away from the power source. 
the only source of power in the whole universe that can fix what was broken, that can strengthen you even when hell hounds are all around you. Amen? Your deliverance, your treasurer, to where he says, ask and it shall be given. If you got guilt and remorse, all I got to do is take it to the Lord and pray. But we run everywhere else into everything else that cannot fix, that cannot soothe, that cannot help you, and we stay. So in the special education class, okay, I'm leading in, the, in that class. I figured out you can't keep me away from God. He done delivered me from so much that his power, well, mama died. I can't do it because mama died. When my mama died, you know where I was? Church! When daddy died, church! When my brother died, my Batman died, Church! saying, you, you, uh, we understand if you ain't going to be at church. What's wrong with you? I'm coming because that's my source of power. That's my source of hope. That's my source of strength. And all I got to do is call on the name of Jesus. That's right. But focus, stay away. Well, you chose your pain. And if you want your pain to be your God, Go right ahead. Knock yourself out. See how that works. God bless you. God smile upon you. You heard me. Bless, 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 For the devil is, for the devil is defeated, we are blessed. Since thou hast walked uprightly as a light in other land, since thou hast placed in thine heart all the Lord's command, he set thee above nations and cast thine enemies away, standing up within thee. So let me hear you say, we rest the city, we rest in the field, we rest when we come and when we go, we cast down in this stronghold, that poverty must for the devil is, for the devil is defeated, we are blessed. I believe it's in God only, but no confidence in man. Everything that does concern thee, I place it in his hand. Now it hopes rise up against thee to try and spoil the day. They're rushing one road to harm thee, but they're fleeing seven ways. We rest in the city, we rest in the field. We rest when we come and when we go. We get down in this stronghold. 
Joshua chapter 14. Joshua chapter 14. Beginning at verse 6. Now the people of Judah approached Joshua at Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephthah, the Kizanite, said to him, You know what the Lord said to Moses, the man of God at Kadesh Barnea, about you and me. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to explore the land, and I brought him back a report according to my convictions. But my fellow Israelites who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt in fear. I, however, followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. So on that day, Moses swore to me the land on which your feet have walked will be your inheritance and that of your children forever because you have followed the Lord my God wholeheartedly. Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses while Israel moved about in the wilderness. So here I am today, 85 years old. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I am just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. Now, verse 12, give me this hill country that the Lord promised me that day. 
You yourself heard then that the Anakites were there and their cities were large and fortified, but the Lord helping me, I will drive them out just as he said. So then Joshua blessed Caleb, son of Jephunneh, and gave him Hebron as his inheritance. Now give me this mountain. Our subject for today is for every mountain. For every mountain. Now I'm not going to take too long to explain what a mountain is. I'm not just talking about Smoky Mountains and Gatlinburg and Lookout Mountain and Chattaboogie and mountains all over the place, the Rocky Mountains. No, 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 no. The mountains represent something that we are dealing with, have dealt with, or will deal with in our living. If you haven't faced the mountain, just hold on. You will. But the text in Caleb and Joshua writing says that God is bigger than your mountain. Uh See, after years of war and conquest, the land of Canaan is finally under the control of the people of Israel. The land east of the Jordan River had already been allocated to Reuben and Gad, half of the tribe of Manasseh, by Moses before the Israelites even crossed the river into the promised land. Now with the fighting over, the land was being distributed by Joshua. According to the verses 1 and 2 of chapter 14, the inheritance was assigned by the high priest. Once the land was divided, it would be the responsibility of each tribe, right, to complete the task of conquering and cleaning the land for their inheritance. According to verse 6, before the leadership had actually begun the process of allotting the land, Caleb went to his boy Joshua at Gilgal to remind him You remember that promise he made to us, right? Since you my boy and it was me and you holding it down and you were there, you heard and okay. So Caleb goes on and tells the story how he and Joshua had been two of the 12 spies sent to spy on the land. Am I right about it? And he gives them that through verses 7, 8, and 9. And he reminds them, Moses swore, saying, Surely the land your foot has trodden shall be yours for your inheritance and your children forever. Not one person could disagree with the value of the land of Canaan. It was, as it was promised, a land of milk and honey. It was truly a land that that was blessed with fertile land and grazing and the, the, the things that could earn them a living. They didn't they didn't differ on their description of the people in the cities. Oh, they were some bad folk. Amen. You ain't running up on them. Mm -mm. And those cities were fortified and and they indeed had giants in the land. The point is that 10 of the spies saw only those dangers. But Joshua and Caleb saw the opportunity. The majority, the 10 measured the giants against themselves. But Caleb and Joshua measured the giants against God. See, he had the faith and the power of God. To Caleb, God was greater than any mountain, than any giant. He wasn't naive about the problems they were going to face. 
the giants, the fortified cities. He did not minimize the problem, but rather he magnified God. In other words, the mountains in your life are not to control you. But by the power of God, you control the mountains. Jesus said it like this in Mark 11, verse 22 and 23. Have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in your heart but shall believe that those things which you have said shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Now understand this. Jesus is not talking about you going out to the Smoky Mountains and making them move. He's talking about not physical mountains, But mountains like obstacles, mountains like problems, difficulties and burdens and hardship and defeat and fear, uncontrolled passions and anger and bitterness, mountains of disappointments and sorrows, of low self-esteem, of sickness, of peer pressure, In other words, the mountain is anything that will stop your progress, your growth in your walk with the Lord. It means anything that stops you from coming to church, anything that stops you from obeying what thus saith the Lord, anything that stops you from your worship of the Most High, anything that will stop you from serving the Lord. And Jesus says when you are facing or dealing with something that has you all jacked up, all messed up, and it looks like a rocky mountain, you need to stop, look to the hills from whence cometh thy help. Start praying. In other words, he's saying you need to trust me. Hmm. Trust me. Jesus says when you are facing life's mountains, let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. The reason why we should have this belief in God, because God made the mountains. God is bigger than the mountains. God is stronger. God is larger. God is wiser. God is smarter. God is more powerful. Believe in God. There's not a single mountain that God cannot handle. If you just trust God and not doubt and say to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, it shall come to pass. The reason why folk ain't successful is because you don't think success. You don't think that you can do something. You done doubted yourself. It ain't the other haters. It ain't everybody say you can't do it. You done told yourself you no good. You done told yourself you can't get up. You can't get the job. I can't get the education. I can't do nothing. But my Bible told me I can do all things. Through Christ Jesus. Psalms 37, 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord and do good, so shall thou dwell in the land, and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. (laughs) 
Foolish folk try to keep me from church. Foolish folk try to keep me away from my Jesus. Foolish folk try to keep me from serving him. That's why you ain't got nothing. You ain't about nothing. You ain't going to do nothing. You ain't never going to have nothing because you don't know the one that I know. See, see that, that was Caleb. See, throughout the Bible, you're going to read of people who were faced with mountains. Oh, I believe they call that the hall of faith in Hebrews chapter 11, where it gives you a list of everyone that God is using for his glory. And when God calls you, you're going to have some mountains. Oh, it ain't no easy life. Jesus says, anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself. Pick up his cross and follow me. It's going to cost, but I'll conquer my mountains. See, Joseph was rejected by his family, his brothers, sold into slavery, lied on and put in jail. But in due time, he was sent from the prison house to Pharaoh's house. And, and Joseph was going through the storms of his life, but God was able to help him overcome. Old man Job had some mountains. Oh, he had the whoo, he had the Himalayas. You hear me? He had mountains you ain't going to never see. But God helped him to overcome those mountains. So, so Caleb wasn't satisfied with where he was. He wanted what God had promised. Y'all better listen to me. He said, give me this mountain. See, 45 years early, he laid his eyes on this mountain, and he never lost sight. See, you got to have a vision. You, 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 you got to see, dream some dreams. You, you got to see ahead of time. You need to quit looking paycheck to paycheck. You need to quit looking till next Sunday. You need to look down the road. You need to see the vision and the dream that God has got you. Where will you be? Where do you want to go? Too many people are willing to dwell in the low country. Too many of us are content to be normal Christians. Too many of us want to dwell in mediocrity when God wants us to live on the mountain. That God wants us to come up to Mount Zion, to come up a little bit higher, but some of us got comfortable in the swamp. Some of us got comfortable in the sewer. Some of us got comfortable in the pigsty. Some of us done got comfortable on the street corner. Some of us done got comfortable with our raggedy toe up friends. Well, well. Amen? Yeah. You got some raggedy toe up friends you comfortable with? I think you better do what pastor did. I think I better let it go. Let it go, baby. Huh? Kick them out the door. They got to go. You ain't dragging me down. You better cut the anchor. You better hoist the sails. Because it's time to go a little higher. Caleb wanted the mountain. He wanted what God had for him. If you got goals, you can learn a lot from Caleb. If you got dreams, if, if you want to know how to make stuff happen, you got to have a desire to make it happen. Well, well. On the field, running track, on the Kumite, I already done dropped you. It's just a matter of when that referee blow that whistle. When the judges go, hey! I already done dropped, dropped you. I already done won. Before I put the gi on, the match is over. Because I already saw victory. Get in the conflict. See, how you practice is how you play. How I practice is I already dropped you in 10 seconds, in 15 seconds. I already done dropped you with that first move. It's over. If you survive that, that's because you can fight without seeing. Because your eyeball is down there. 
Amen. You got to visualize victory. You got to see yourself where God wants you to be. You got to see yourself in that house. You got to see yourself working in that career. You got to see yourself. You got to visualize. You got to step back. If you see him on TV doing it, you got to just transpose your picture. That's me sitting at the desk. That's me doing the interview. That is me doing the surgery. That is me treating the patient. That is me running the bank. That is me. We need to see what God has promised. Caleb was not content to just sit by and let life happen to him. He took initiative. He says, no, I'm happening on it. You know, that's sad. You, 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 you less than 40 years old. Some of you less than 50 years old. This is an 85-year-old brother. Dude, I can get it done. What they said, age ain't nothing but a number. Well, well. If that is true, some of y'all 200 years old. Well, well. <laughs> can't move, can't do nothing, can't make a decision, can't do nothing. You got to be able to respond with positivity. You got to be able to respond with the power of God on your side. You got to be able to respond that you got a whole host of angels surrounding you wherever you go. I wish you would start something. See, when Caleb says, it may be that the Lord will be with me. I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord has said. So Joshua blessed him and gave him Hebron and Hebron was his inheritance. So I looked at the passage. I looked at this and what what was Caleb's success? His success was the first thing I saw was in the passage. Caleb served the Lord wholeheartedly, wholeheartedly, with all your heart. See, God don't like wishy-washy folk. He don't like lukewarm. He says, I spit them out my mouth. Amen? I don't want the spit. You going to carry spit around your mouth all day? No. It's got to go. So I don't like fake folk. Come smiling one day. And then the other day you talking about people behind their back and doing all this. And then sometimes when something don't go your way, you get mad. Get out of here. Like I'm a cat. Get. Oh, I almost said it. <laughs> Amen. You got to get over that. See, you care what other people think instead of caring about what God things. See, as long as God says I'm cool, I don't care what you think. You just want me to come down in your pity party and come down in your pain, come down in your misery. You know what they say? Y'all know what they say. Crabs in the tank. One try to get out, the other ones pull them back down. That's why the smart harvester tie them, them claws up. Go about Red Lobster. Them claws are tied. Amen? So you can't be grabbing and holding on and keeping others. But when I've been set free, I'm getting up out of here. Mm, mm, mm. So Caleb served wholeheartedly. He had a different spirit. He saw that the land was beautiful. He saw the opportunities. You got to see the positive. You got to see the opportunities there. I don't care what situation is, there's an opportunity. I don't care how dark the days, there's an opportunity. I don't care what you're going through, how bad it is. God is there in the midst. If I serve a God that is everywhere, 
that is omnipresent, that is omnipotent, that is omniscient, that I can't go to no high mountain and God ain't there. I can't go to the deepest sea and God is not there. I can't go to the darkest cave and God is already sitting there. So what's up? He is present with you always and he has promised you I never leave you nor forsake you. You got to get this different spirit that Caleb and Joshua had. David had the same kind of spirit when he faced Goliath. A whole army of Israel. Oh my God. Oh my God. The king. David said, who is this dog talking about our God? And why are y'all just standing there letting him do this? I don't need a sword. I don't need a shield. I don't need your arm. All I got to do is take this rock in the power of God. Amen. That's a different kind of spirit. Paul may have been thinking about Caleb and David when he told Timothy in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, God gave us a spirit not of fear but of power, of love. Of self control. We are different. Don't think like them. Secondly, Caleb followed God fully. In this passage, God uses this phrase to declare Caleb's complete faithfulness to him. Caleb uses the same phrase to declare his faithfulness and cite the reason why he should be given Hebron and the surrounding hill country. Caleb's dedication to God was complete, unwavering, unending. Jesus declared in Matthew 17 and 20 that if we have faith the size of a mustard seed, we can move mountains. Why ain't your mountain moving? You got to see. Move it. Why are you stuck? Get it done. Don't let the mountains control your destiny. Fourthly, Caleb was confident in his own strength. Caleb declares that he is as strong and ready for battle now as he was when he stood with the nation of Israel back in the promised wilderness 45 years ago. Mm -hmm. Caleb indicates that his strength did not come from within himself. But he says, the Lord has kept me alive. Caleb knew that his strength, his vitality was a gift from God and he gave God all the credit. Caleb knew he wasn't being pompous and arrogant. Pastor ain't being pompous and arrogant. It ain't what I can do. It is what God will do through me, in me, and for me. Confident. That's why I know I can drop it like it's hot. That's why I know he, he says you don't even have to fight. You don't even have to do the roundhouse. Just speak the word. Well. Amen. Well. And just carry yourself in a certain way. See, to y'all, you, you're not a threat, so I'm not a threat. But the ones that's a threat. See, Y'all the ones was in the library or just playing hopscotch and stuff. You wasn't with the ones that was fighting. See, fighters, we know, you know, okay, that's a bully. Those are the weak and the sheep. But the other ones know who not to mess with. Amen? Who not to roll up on. Amen? It wasn't just men, folk. Shoot, with some mamas, you don't want to roll up on her. Don't let up for Sister Flora pull that razor out. <laughs> that pearl handle doocy doocy. <laughs> you roll up, I catch you, I catch you, dude. I'm telling you, Amen. 
confident in your strength. And then he was patient. God made a promise to Caleb that would not be fulfilled for 45 years during all that time. Caleb never gave up his hope. He never gave in to despair. God had promised it. God had said it. God had promised it. It is going to happen. I believe it. I'm going to hold my life to it. I'm going to set everything for it. I'm going to prepare my house to receive it. I'm going to prepare my mind and my hands to hold it. I am going to trust in the Lord. So like Caleb, we must have a spirit of courage which is founded in the faith of God. We must follow God completely, thoroughly, uncompromising, unending faith. We must be willing to do our part when it's time to pick up your cross. See, I don't like these Christian folk to get in here with all this little weak stuff talking about fighting and why you fight. What, what the heck do you think we got to hear them say on with Christian soldiers? What do you think soldiers do? Just go out on the battlefield, they go to Ukraine. Stop it, stop it. Praise the Lord. You got to fight for your blessings. You got to fight to keep them. You got to fight to maintain it. You got to fight to hold on to your marriage. You got to fight for your children. You got to fight for your church. You got to fight for your brothers and sisters. You got to fight for your civil rights. You got to fight, fight, fight. So we must be willing to do our part. But we also need to be patient. See, these are the lessons Caleb has taught in this passage. Lord, have mercy. See, when I look around and I think things over, every now and again, I got to remember God. I got to remember his mercy, his goodness. I got to remember how far God has brought and somebody his son said my soul looks back in wonder how I got over and how God has brought me through when I look at my giants I say I'm going to conquer you I'm ready to take what the Lord says is mine I want everything that he has for me through the vision may tarry I'll wait I'm going to hold on Hold on just a little while longer. It will speak and it's not going to lie. I'm not going to get discouraged. I'm not going to get afraid. For God didn't spare his own son but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not through Jesus give us all things? God is not slack concerning his promises. Oh, he's long suffering. He's kind. He don't want anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. He says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whatever the Lord says is yours. <laughs> it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Just like the sun came up, sun going to go down. The promises are going to happen. My possessions are going to happen. My, my abilities are going to increase. I, I'm going to move up just a little while longer. I'm telling you, it's because God is faithful. His faithfulness has been tried by Shadrach, Meshach, and a bad Negro in the fiery furnace. It's been tried by Daniel in the lion's den. It's been tried by David fighting the Philistine. It's been tried by Paul and Silas in the midnight hour. It was tried on Calvary's mountain, on a hill far away. Stood an old rugged cross. Oh, he died, but he rose again. It says for every mountain. So far, I sit down. Perhaps says, why you why you why you write this? I wrote this because I was listening to something, and I remember Fred Francis singing it, but I, I listened to the original. It said, "Him right said." I got so much to thank God for. So many blessings and 
so many open doors a brand new mercy along with each new day that's why I praise you for this I give you praise why for waking me up this morning for starting me on my way for letting me see the sunlight of a brand new day a brand new mercy along each new day that's why I praise for this I give you praise and then I just started crying for every mountain you brought me over for every trial you sing me through for every blessing hallelujah for this I give you praise for every mountain it's done just conquer it. Get to your promise. Get to what God has given you an inheritance. Claim it. Take possession. And use it. God bless you. God smile upon you. Somebody say amen up in here. Don't let me think you're dead. And as we stand, the doors of the church are open. You need to come to Jesus. Pastor, I, I don't know how to climb a mountain. He, he got a mountain class. He'll teach you how to climb. He'll teach you how to have the right equipment with you. Amen. He'll give you the ropes. He'll give you the picks. He'll give you the shoes with the spike. He'll give you the harness. He'll give you the equipment that you need to fight and climb those mountains. Won't you come? If you need a church home, here it is. Amen. Y'all better just cut that out now. You know he done brought you through. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Getting ready to get that uh, tithe and our offering. Are you understanding? You do know all the mountains God brought you through. Thank you. 
What was I, 40 something, 44, 45 when I had a heart attack? Yeah. Or going on the interstate at about 65 miles an hour and then all of a sudden spin around and you're going backwards because of ice and a truck is following you. So God spin you back around. <clears throat> Not knowing how you're going to feed the family, but God made a way. Watching cancer. Watching Alzheimer's. Watching sickness. Watching your body betray you. But God give you strength. What they say, a reasonable portion of health and strength. That's what for every mountain. You brought me over. It wasn't because of me. You did this. You did it for my parents. You did it for my father-in-law, my mother-in-law. You done it for the families time and time again. You know my baby sister. Well, she ain't my, I'm the baby. But she, she, she my baby sister. 2012, when mama died, Mary retired early from the post office to take care of mama, so we didn't put her in a nursing home. They diagnosed her with stage four lung cancer. You got two weeks. My sister said, I ain't going nowhere. I got to take care of mama. That was 2012. Mary's still here. <laughs> But she's going through. Because she was up here. And she spoiled the kids rotten. Three PlayStations for Christmas. Mary, really? That's so they don't fight. That's all right, Pastor. But what chemo and radiation does, it'll do to the brain what Alzheimer and dementia does. So it's kind of messed up, so she got to go. She had to leave. <laughs> she got to go to Texas. So I ain't seen her for a while. But every now and again, I get to see her. But I see the effects that that stuff had. But I still hear, I love you. And then, yeah, I love you too, baby. That's a mountain. To watch my sisters care for it. Thank you, Lise. Thank you, George. For every mountain. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. So if you got to take care of your loved one, it's hard. But I'm telling you, it's a blessing. It was a blessing picking up daddy out of the bed well, so Mary could change the sheets. It was a blessing putting him in the wheelchair, folding it, and pushing it to the appointments. Because it's going to come a time when you can't do that no more. It was a blessing. Going through the nursing home. See, you got to go to the nursing home because if you don't go up, they don't think nobody going to show up and they don't care. Well, well. Amen? Yeah. But when you got angry little bald-headed people coming up in there, yeah, yeah what's up? Well. Yeah, I see it's been turned. That's what, yeah, I see this sheet's been done because if the sheets ain't done, guess what? Yeah. We're going to have problems. We're going to have some issues up in here. Mm -hmm. Better not be no bed sores. Better not be no infection. When I come in that room, it better smell like pine salt or flowers and lilies and everything else. Amen? Otherwise, 
but it showed the grace of God even in the midst because I got to thinking through all that all them folk carried me when I was like that all those folk changed me gave me clothes and gave me presents and gave me gifts God said it's your turn take care of them lead them feed them I'm telling you it's a blessing trust the pastor on that you're going to receive a blessing just go on and conquer that mountain God bless you I smile upon you. Y'all ready? Well, ain't he good? Yes, he is. Oh, there go them obedient people. <laughs> <laughs> Father, I thank you for the mountains. Thank you, Jesus. I thank you for the victories. I thank you for the cross. I thank you that you've given us the strength to conquer. The strength to not give up, to continually press forward in the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank you for our inheritance. So we give you honor. We give you praise. Now and forevermore, let the church say,